thereby depriving them both of the use of hemp towards their sailcloth, rope and other hemp product used in the war effort. Despite Napoleon's protests, Alexander I allowed merchants to smuggle hemp to Britain. This is one of the reasons why Napoleon decided to invade Russia. But the severe early winter of 1812 forced him to withdraw his troops and led to the end of his empire. In the early 19th century, in Europe, the mysterious East became the latest rage, as did cannabis smoking. The Oriental wave influenced styles of interior decoration, clothing and travel abroad. To be in fashion, people smoked hashish with a traditional water pipe and discovered its potent effects on lovemaking. In Paris, the famous Hachachin Club was located at Hotel Pimodon. Artists and writers came here to eat Dr. Joseph Moreau de Tours' famous jam which incorporated hashish. Among them were Théophile Gautier, Eugène Delacroix, Charles Baudelaire, Alexandre Dumas, Gérard de Nerval. Queen Victoria also used hashish. She used tincture of cannabis, a popular method for alleviating period pains. She was also prescribed morphine or laudanum, another popular remedy for many complaints. In Amsterdam, cannabis, which had been imported from the Dutch colonies of South Africa since 1660, was smoked in coffee shops, a tradition that has survived until present day. At the end of the 19th century, Indian migrants brought cannabis into Mexico where it was named marijuana and then became the symbol of Pancho Villa's rebellion with the song La Cucaracha. Mexican farmers on their side copied the Indian water wetting process to prepare the fibers. They made every kind of product, from hats to bags and carpets. Marijuana traveled from Mexico to the southern states of America. Black people working in the cotton plantation smoked it to try and soften their harsh lives, which were aggravated by the economic aftermath of the Civil War. Marijuana fever hit the suburbs of Louisville through Dixieland jazz and swing. Marijuana was known in America as reefer or grass. Within a few years, reefer songs spread widely from the music clubs which had appeared everywhere where the immigrant black community settled. Have you ever met that funny reefer man? Have you ever met that funny reefer man? Along with new developments in the hemp industry and a growing awareness of the dangers of alcohol, marijuana began to be the subject of interest in the corridors of political power. In 1911, um, New Orleans and then Louisiana and Mississippi and um, a couple of states along the Mississippi River outlawed marijuana. Meanwhile, alcohol was increasingly being seen as a danger to society. American women lobbied for alcohol to be banned. This succeeded with prohibition, which led to illegal speakeasies, the proceeds of which enriched criminals and resulted in violence and gang warfare. Alcohol was legalized again in 1933. And then all of a sudden alcohol was becoming legal again, and all these agents didn't have anything to do, and Harry Anslinger thought, well, we should have a law against hemp, and so did William Randolph Hearst, and so did uh, DuPont. And the three companies got together, and um, other people claimed the cotton industry joined in to outlaw hemp because it was making a huge comeback. And the reason it was making a huge comeback is that it took two to three hundred hours to plant, harvest, and break, make ready for fiber, acre of hemp. But all of a sudden, in the 30s, in the 1930s, that two or three hundred 
man hours per acre went down to one man hour per acre. It was a better fiber than any other fiber and, and previous hemp fibers. And that was the beginning of the end of all fibers um, uh, as being the only synthetic nylon, was, which is the new synthetic, would have to make way for the reintroduction of hemp as an inexpensive fiber, as well as the strongest, the best, the longest lasting, and the softest fiber. The government of the United States outlawed a fiber and forced the rest of the world to swallow it. They swallowed the outlawing of the number one fiber on earth for 10,000 years until the 1930s, and then they outlawed it completely. China, the hemp country, was part of the Japanese plan for military conquest. But in official Tokyo, seat of an empire which for nearly a decade has been governed by its stern and ruthless military caste, there is more activity, more secret comings and goings than in many a year. The little men who command the world's third largest navy see in the South Pacific the richest of all colonial prizes. The Philippines, a group of 7,091 Pacific Islands which, still under the protection of the U.S. flag, constitute the only major hazard to Japanese plans for new conquest in the war year of 1940. Already one important island industry, the growing and processing of Manila hemp, is almost entirely under Japanese control. And within the past few years, by intensive cultivation, Japanese immigrant farmers have increased production of the one cash crop which has long been a virtual Philippine monopoly. The invasion of the two big hemp producing countries, China and Philippines, was the start of hemp rationing. Hitler was also aware of the strategic importance of hemp, which was used in the making of canvas and ropes, both of which were an essential part of his war effort. In 1941, when the German army invaded Russia, it blocked Britain's supply of Russian hemp. Germany managed to develop her own hemp production, but the cultivation of this fibre, which had become so necessary in wartime, was still banned in Great Britain. In 1942, the German troops reached the centre of Russia. The land continued to produce hemp, which enabled Hitler to move confidently to the next stage of his plans for the Reich. To safeguard its own supplies of hemp, Great Britain urged India to increase production. Meanwhile, war was spreading to Japan. Within little more than a year, Japan, successfully employing once again the deceit and treachery which had so well served her in the past, had taken the final desperate plunge. When Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, forcing the United States of America to declare war, Americans realized they were cut off from their hemp supplies. The US Navy was totally dependent upon hemp for rot-resistant ropes for their ships and for many other components. The American government then decided to redevelop their hemp industry. Marijuana was legalized again and farmers received seeds. A propaganda film called Hemp for Victory was then made to encourage this war effort. The Allies Air Forces were completely reliant upon hemp. Parachute straps, packs and belts were made out of hemp. No other available fibre was so strong and so reliable under combat conditions. After General MacArthur had forced the Japanese to withdraw from the Philippines, hemp production soon reached pre-war levels again. After the war years, a new world arose from the ashes of the old. India gained independence. Thanks to automation, India doubled its hemp production and it 